Um, so as I said earlier, right, um, the uh, broader <coughs> context of this work comes from like the ratification work that uh, was started like 30, 40 years ago by uh, John McCarthy. Uh, at that time, he used uh, he advocated the use of ratification to replace the model logic. Uh, and uh, with the work of uh, Guha on the context, say, and uh, with the recent work here, like this day, when we apply the context in the semantic web, uh, we see like how do we represent and reason with the knowledge from the web. So today, the topic of my talk is to propose the semantic web foundations for representing reasoning and traversing the contextualized knowledge graph. So I start with the semantic web cake. Um, in this, this is the architecture proposed for the semantic web logics. And you can see that it has many layers in here. And so uh, you can see all of the familiar terms like Sparkle, OWL, uh, semantic web rule language, RDFS, RDF, XML, and URI. So these, so far, only these parts are like mature enough to become standard from World Wide Web Consortium. And the focus of my work today will be on, can you see? No. Will be on the Sparkle, RDFS, RDF. These, the, the bottom layers are used by the upper layers. Like uh, in the IDF, we will use the URI and the Unicode. And some of that like, can be represented in XML, but we have other format as well. So my work is from here to two layers from IDF, IDFS, and Sparkle. And the extension of this work will be our, but it's not the focus of the dissertation. Uh, so we see that because of the significance of the lower layers because they provide a foundation for the next layers on the top to be developed. So when this layer change, the upper levels change too. So because of that, um, my work is on the foundation of the semantic web. So that explains for the first one, like why I put like semantic web foundations is the title. And uh, next. So here, this is like the link data diagram. Like I just got it like a couple days ago, and um, this is each node in the. You can see that each node in the in the diagram is one data set, and you can see that there are like thousands of data sets that are linked together. That's how it's called a link <coughs> data. Um, each color is encoded for one. Um, domain or one field, like some of that would be like in large sense, in uh, publication, in uh, like, like the, the pink one that you can see that is the large sense, one of the biggest ones. Um, until yesterday, the number that they actually number they have is more than 6,000. But uh, many of them contains error. And this took nearly 3,000 data sets. It is only for the one that can be queried. And the number of triples is 149 billion triples. In order to publish data into this uh, link data, to follow the principle. Like, you, uh, you, you, like uh, each entity must be referenced by the URIs and so and so. The, um, Link data with a DBpedia, uh, Yago, and many other data sets has been employed by, uh, in, by both industry and academic work. Um, the, the, I think this is the fam one of the most famous work used of the semantic web in, uh, in the industry with the IBM Watson work. Beside that, like this day, you heard the term of knowledge graph. And uh, you heard it from like uh, Google started in 2012 with they they they, they create a name 
they, they come up with the name knowledge graph. But actually, it is like a knowledge base that can be like an idea of data set with a graph like structure like subject, bracket, and object. And uh, schema knowledge is uh, one of the, oh, I didn't put it here, one of uh, not only like success with the light semantics that can be used by millions of uh, websites in the world. And um, you can see like all of the major players in the field, like, like big companies, like uh, the first one is like uh, Facebook. Facebook <coughs> is um, uh, Open Graph and uh, Google Knowledge Graph. And later on, they call it like Google Knowledge Wall. And uh, the CEO of that report, more than 7 billion uh, cryptos were extracted in October 16. And then like, Oracle has uh, a semantic graph. And um, uh, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google now. So these days, with the uh, smart like, assistant, like Siri, the knowledge graph is used <coughs> in the back end. So that, see, like a knowledge graph has become very popular. And the nearest example that you can use is like go to Google and put something there and you see like the, the, num the, the knowledge from their knowledge graph being retrieved for your answer. So, so for all of those success, right, uh, we, are, like, we are encountering like many research problems that are challenging and I think somehow it's kind of a bottleneck. So that is, um, this kind of problems was raised by uh, many people like in Guha, in, uh, in, the, in the speech he, go, he gave at the ISWC uh, keynote, uh, light at the end of the tunnel. So in that he, uh, he emphasized the uh, challenge that how do we represent more complex knowledge? Like if we want to represent the time, the provenance, the energy relationship, or if it is uh, attitude, like if you believe it or not. So we don't have an efficient mechanism theoretically to uh, represent, to address this problem. And he faced this, um, he faced this problem from his uh, schema.org. And um, like um, Olivier also had a problem with also have that kind of requirements in his uh, uh, big, I used to call it big year? Yeah, big year work. And like other project as well. So the basic, basically the problem is we have knowledge represented in the form of subject, predicate, and object. And usually our knowledge cannot be that simple. It, like, like when you are speaking, it cannot just be subject, uh, subject, verb, and object, right? You always add it with like verb, uh, with uh, adverbs, so time and place, and many others. So, the questions become: How do we represent them in the RDF form, like with the triple form? And the um, the uh, the old, really old solution, like the verification, is not uh, acceptable. And then I explain like why it is not acceptable like <coughs> later on. So what do we need? So out of this, like in order, I think like in order to progress this work in both um, research in academia and industry, we do need a data model that can represent the complex knowledge in a simple form, so that machine can understand and then uh, derive some meaningful knowledge out of it. So here I put like, like for the syntax of it, it uh, we prefer it to be in the triple form because it is very well known and very well adopted. And it should be able to support multiple type of metadata, like you can see time, provenance, uh, certainty, uh, attitude, like all of those. And on the top of that, we if we want to derive meaningful knowledge by rules, we need to represent the knowledge in the mathematical form, like precisely, unambiguously capture and interpret the knowledge. So that is challenging because we know that our knowledge is not, like, is not precise. Like, the way we communicate, the way we write 
the things knowledge down like a lot of errors and ambiguity. <coughs> so, but to some extent, if we are able to do that, like it, I think it will uh, will be empowered with the um, uh, benefit from the uh, mathematical logic. Um, so here I propose an, a term, a new term that is going to be the focus of this work, that is um, contextualized knowledge graph. So you heard of you you have you heard of knowledge graph from Google, from other places, but here we talk about a contextualized knowledge graph. So uh, here I provide a few definitions so that we know. So first, the context of a triple. What is the context of a triple? So here we say that the context of a triple represents many things. It can be like entering relationship, a propositional attitude, or metadata such as time, location, provenance, certainty, and so on and so on. And we say that a contextualized triple is a triple that is associated with context. And the last one is the contextualized knowledge graph. Contextualized knowledge graph is a knowledge graph where every triple is contextualized, simple like that. <coughs> so our goal in, for this work is to develop the Semantic Web Foundation as I explain uh, why it is the foundation with the um, Semantic Web Cake architecture like our work is on the bottom. So that is the semantic web foundations for, uh, I focus on three aspects. One is the representing, reasoning, and traversing the graph. Um, for contextualized knowledge graph. The thesis statement <laughs> to be validated today is that, like, I believe that it is possible to develop first a compact and formal representation, and second, a sound and complete inference mechanism. And the third one is a model theoretic graph formalism that can be efficiently implemented. So I divided this uh, thesis. In order to support this uh, statement, I will present like three parts of the work, like one, two, and three. Each of them will be presented separately like in the in three uh, parts. So I'll start with the first, like this is the overview. So in the first part for the representation, um, I will explain and provide the evidence to show that like, we can develop a compact and formal representation for contextualized knowledge graph. I will just say it's too long, so I'm just saying CKG. And the second part, and uh, for, for the first part for the uh, representation, uh, we are proposing a new approach called like single and proper <coughs> representation or just SP. Um, in the part one, we, uh, we, de we dedicate the part one for that SP uh, representation. And for the second part, we talk about the reasoning. So um, we will show that like we can develop a sound and complete inference mechanism with both kind of rules, context and syntax based rules. And for the, for the third part, it's about like traversing the graph. So for the time, uh, for the module of the work, as well as the time limited for this talk, I will try to focus on the first two. And for the, the last part, if I have like more time, I will go over it. Otherwise, I uh, can read it in the dissertation. So I'll start with the first part. Um, so in this part, we focus on the semantic web foundation for representing. In this part, uh, I will start with the uh, motivation, and then I will compare like the existing approaches to our, our approach, and then like uh, I will provide the model theoretic se semantics for the approach that we are proposing. And later, it will be like uh, how do we query uh, SP? and the two use cases that we apply SP in the real world data set. And the, uh, later on we provide the experimental evaluation on this data set and 
um, so I've seen that like the first the first part until the, this except the, the last two I have presented in our group like so many times and uh, in the proposal as well so I'm just going through this part very quickly and I'll focus more on the on the new contribution that is like our work has been adopted and evaluated by um, our <coughs> research group and um, uh, when I was getting the feedback from the community, I was motivated to optimize the SP representation so that it can be uh, uh, more practical, like um, make it like uh, easier to be adopted. So this is the familiar uh, slide, set of slide that uh, we have. Uh, we have the set of facts like Bob Dallas married to Sarah Loams, and he also married to Carolyn Dennis. If we just have this much information, uh, we cannot answer like many que many questions, like um, where it comes from, when it happened, and uh, uh, many many information. We call it a meta query. However, if we have the time information, like temporal information, the time that they uh, they they the duration of the marriage, and we will be able to answer in more question. So the question is, how do we, so we see that the first part we have the subject, predicate, and object. And now we have two more information here, like the start and the end, how do we represent it in the triple form? So here comes the uh, many approaches. So uh, we can, uh, we can uh, class, like, we can group the existing approaches into uh, three groups in the form of triple, uh, quad, and uh, quintuple. So the first one is the form of uh, triple replication. So I mentioned it earlier, right? Like it was uh, it was created by Jim McCarthy and uh, adopted in systematic way for rep for uh, representing a statement. This is. Can I just go there? So, um, this is the. Can you see that? Okay. So uh, this is the reification form of this uh, fact. So, in order to reify, we create one instance of statement, and then we point it to subject, predicate, and object. And in order to assert additional information for that fact we assert it with the uh, statement instance. So um, this is, the, the advantage of this is, is very simple, easy to understand, pointing to subject, predicate, and object. But it, it, <coughs> but it has uh, major flaws that for it not to be adopted by the community and it is uh, this courage in the uh, link open data. You can see that it first <coughs> is very verbose, second it is not formal, is not formalized in the semantics yet. And um, and this is how we represent it in <coughs> in our This is how we represent it in our single in SP approach. Like we create one instance of the property to represent the uniqueness of that relationship between the subject and the object. So we create a married to one a subject uh, is a same property of married to, and we assert that between the two subject object, and we assert additional information using that single property SP. That is our approach. And uh, uh, we published this work uh, in 2014 with uh, Dr. Shen and Dr. Bernheider. And um, the second approach in this category is the pace of provenance uh, where context entity. Um, uh, this work proposed by uh, Satya and Dr. Bernheider and Dr. Shen too. And Dr. Prasad too. <laughs> Isn't that all a committee? Mm. Yeah. So uh, in this um, in this um, pace approach, we have the three version of it. 
C1, C2, C3. So the basic idea of that is that in one particular context, we create one entity for it. And then we, we make that entity um, to be aware of the provenance. And uh, for the experimental evaluation of this approach, it saves 50% uh, of the number proposed. Um, but the downside of that is, is, is hard to understand and uh, limited expressiveness. And this is how we represent using the SP approach. The second category in this is the name graph. So the basic idea of the name graph is not for representing a triple. It is for grouping a set of triples into the same name graph. And they give it a name so that it can be referred. Um, the, you can see that like uh, this is name graph, but we can also use it for like the, uh, what is that called? Mm, the nano publication. So in that, the name graph can be unique in the way that it can represent the triple and additional information can be attached with it. <coughs> the um, limitation of the name graph is more on the, so the first thing for the syntax of it is that it's like an um, ad hoc approach. It's not a principal approach in the way that, um, so you have, this is a database approach basically. So we have three columns, subject, predicate, and object for the triple. And now if you want to talk about that, you add one more column, right? It's very familiar for the tables. And uh, the, lim the, the major limitation of that is for representing individual triple is that the semantic of the fourth component is not defined. <coughs> so that is the, the, the main reason that we don't use a name graph for it is the triple identifier. And uh, we use our approach for it. And the last category is the IDF uh, star. So, uh, it, so for the name graph, we add one more column. For the IDF uh, plus, we add two more columns, right? If you have two more columns, you want to say the meaning of that, I like start and end. So you add a meta property and meta value. So this is the IDF plus. The um, the downside of this is. It looks intuitive, but everything has to be re-implemented. Like the, even the syntax, semantics of that, it has to be transformed between the IDF form and the IDF plus. So, so may I say in yeah. a very intuitive and, uh, way of uh, differentiating all of these, and that is in single property, you are able to directly focus on the most important thing, the property. Everything is just around the property, what you want to associate with the property. In other cases, there is some sort of mix and match is kind of stuff. Like you're naming this whole thing, and G1 and all that. But in single property, merit to is all that matters. The All of the properties you want to associate with that, contextual property you want to associate, is associated to yes. merit to. Yes. Just focus on merit to, yes. associate property and run with it. Yes. Others just didn't do that, as yes. simple as that. So uh, later on, I will explain like why um, why why we came up with this approach based on the intuition. It's like eliminating the other choices, and then you see like you you, you are left with one option. Let's say, why don't you just attach it to the property? So that is how we we, we develop this. So so to 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 um so we have seen like we like, I have presented many approaches, right? But uh, for our data model, so here I list uh, some of them, like not all of them. I think like some of them may come up with other requirements, but I'm not aware of those. So for these are the requirements for the data model to be developed and evaluated. So for that, I believe that it, um, the, the data model should be really simple and easy to understand because that is how REF is developed for. It's very simple. <coughs> And very nat very it uh, it very close to nat our natural language like subject verb object subject predicate and object. And second, it has to be formalized with the model theory. 
And the third one, it should be very scalable due to the scale of the web, World Wide Web. And the fourth requirement is it must be compatible with existing standards so that we don't have to redo the work. We don't have to re-implement the application tool system just for supporting that model. The last one is it should be it should be a principal approach so that it can represent variety of metadata. As I said, it can be like <coughs> like a provenance, time, location. So uh, I will come back to this slide later on at the end so that we like after I present our work, we can evaluate objectively whether the, the proposal meets the requirements or not. So now like, um, so in the previous slide, I show you how we, uh, how we represent it in the SP form and here is the intuition of that. So, <coughs> so we have, um, we have, um, <coughs> <laughs> so we have the marital is a, is a regular property, and uh, the marital can be used between uh, many pairs like Bob, Dallin, Sarah, Dallin, Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, and so and so. So. If we make any assertion intuitively, if we make any assertion into this merit tool, it will be applicable to all of the apps. So for that, we developed a single property approach in a way that we say that merit to one, two, three, like making an ID unique and uh, their area property, but they are different from the regular property in the way that <coughs> each SP is mapped to only <coughs> one pair. So because of that, you can make assertions about that pair. So for that reason, the single property here becomes the identifier for the triple. And you see that like one instance is mapped to uh, one pair. And you see the, the, the regular property is mapped to a a set of pairs. Because of that, this intuitively become one instance of the generic property. And this is our um, model semantics for this. <coughs> so, uh, when, when you look at the model theoretic semantics, you may think that the model theory is very difficult, but in our case, semantic web, the model theory is really simple if you really look into it. Really, really simple. The first thing is like the IR is the set of resources. IP is the set of predicate. And we know that like the predicate, one predicate is mapped to a set of resources, a set of pairs of resources. And that I extension is the mapping. So what we introduce here is the new extension, new set of predicate, and we call it IP as the set of uh, uh, single properties. And uh, the IS extension is the extension to map one single property to one pair of resources. And in the idea of interpretation here, like I just define like what is defined as a single property. So I'm just going through this quickly because of the limited time. So if you are interested in this, like I would be, you are very welcome to discuss the offline. And uh, this gives an example of the uh, model theory. Like, uh, if you, oh yeah, this can be discussed offline as well. Yeah. So, <coughs> so we have uh, present the SP in the form of triple. So now, how do we query them? So one of the uh, one of the uh, most important feature of the SP is that because it represented in the form of triple. So. It can be queried by Sparkle without any effort. So we divided two type of uh, queries. One is like uh, like without metadata, and one is uh, with meta. So 
we just need to modify the triple pattern, add one more triple into the patterns in order to query the uh, metadata of the triple. So uh, uh, in this work, we, we uh, had two use cases. One is in the Yago 2S. Uh, Yago 2S S means uh, spatial temporal. <coughs> so the, the way that... Is she, is she ping me or something? So in the Yago 2S, this is how they represent it. They use the additional ID, but that one is just is not uh, is not in the data model yet. And this is how we uh, transform the Yago 2S to the uh, SD representation. The second one is uh, with the uh, BKL with the provenance. So uh, with side work, we had uh, four data set generated uh, replication, page one, page C1, 2, and 3. So, <coughs> so uh, in the BKR, every uh, predication is associated with the uh, provenance, which is like the article where it comes from or where it was extracted. So I develop. I, I, I use the version that Satya created and transform it into SP, and you can see the, the size of the data set. Like the ratification stands out with a lot of triples in it. And um, uh, we also reused the evaluation Satya did with um, two set of queries, like random value and fixed value for all the five um, <coughs> uh, data set. This show the query length. So we added one more evaluation in this, like in that, like I want to increase the length of the query to see how it affects the performance. And this is the result. <coughs> Did I spread that joke <laughs> wirelessly? <laughs> Okay, so sorry, came up if that was the case. Um, uh, in this one, yeah, you can see that the SP, uh, this one was performed in Virtuoso, and uh, surprisingly, that um, the SP was not optimized in the Virtuoso yet, but but the ratification was. And um, even though without uh, um, uh, optimization, uh, SP performed well for those very long query. You can see that it has up to like 20, 25 patterns in the triple patterns in the query. So, uh, yes. Random value query, what do you mean? Random value, hmm? random value what do you mean? That means that in the query, when we, uh, when we execute the query, we pick random value. And, uh, and it's like the query template. And some of the... You mean three values? Um, so I said, like, um, we, we performed this evaluation on Virtuoso. <coughs> and uh, over the years, our work has been evaluate, evaluated by um, other research group, like um, a pub game with um, a Genfu at MCBI, a Wikidata, and a DBpedia. So <laughs> these are the work that have compare our approach with the existing approach in various data set and various uh, uh, query engines. I will go through each of them like what it was. So the first one is the pop cam. didn't work with just game for I think. Uh, in this one, we generate uh, five data sets uh, from the PubChem data set, and you can see the first one had the annual relationship, and the SP, the three and four, and the nano publication. It's a variation of an graph. 
<coughs> and uh, from the from this evaluation, the SP turned out to be the most compact one. And um, with the model three and four, for the query performance, uh, with this virtuoso, the um, the two version of the SP outperform the rest. This is consistent with the uh, the result that we had with our data set, Vikia. And uh, <coughs> another set of query that uh, we perform well in Virtuoso. And in uh, other in other engine like Stardog, like um, the even though like the result is not the best, but it is comparable and it's the best in one query. And it's not much difference with with other queries. And in place graph, um, the result is, our result is among the one of the best ones. The second evaluation the second data set evaluated was the wiki data. And this one was performed by several groups. So the first one by uh, Daniel <coughs> that uh, reifying RDF what works well with Wikidata. So the context of this work is that because Wikidata contains the metadata for the triple. So they want to investigate which approach they should be taking. And uh, with, this, with, with this evaluation, we say that the SP is the most compact one. No, but uh, they, they showed the name graph to be the Oh, it's not comparable. Like in terms of a triple representation, it's the most compact one. Mm. Uh, and for the name graph, so those numbers don't exactly mm. tell you that. Mm. So, I mean, when you're saying that, when you're just showing something, not the NG is 57 million, the RC is, uh, you know, SP is 114 million. Oh, I'm sorry. This is this is a name graph. I'm sorry. Like <coughs> this is squared. And this is like number of triples. Yeah. So later on, I will explain how we mimic the name graph so that we don't even need a name graph. And it is going to be a fair comparison. So in the, in the query performance, um, it turned out that the SP model is not supported by Forstall and GraphDB. And the reason for that is, you know, like in area triple, they in, in, in uh, Forstall and GraphDB, they made an assumption that the number of predicates is limited by 1,000, at most like 10,000, but not billion, because some of that, they use, the index, they create like maybe one table for one predicate. If you, if, if they load the SP data set, they will create billions of tables, which is impossible. And I think it is it's, it's unfair. It's uh, it's an unreasonable assumption. It may work for some cases, but in general, the data the data model of the RDF doesn't put any restriction on the number of predicate that we should have. What would you particularly uh, describe this limitation as? Is it the limitation in number of property types uh, that you want to model in, or is it the restriction uh, amount of contextual data you want to model or something okay. else? So you mean the limitation of the SP? No, the limitations that they use of uh, number of properties, right? You said that the limitations they use is arbitrary limit property yeah, and they limit just to thousand or something you said. Yeah, like... Um, what does that imply? <coughs> what, where would this limitation be not Good. What, what, what will it fail to capture? Will it fail to capture uh, those cases where data enhances a lot of different types of um, 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 relationships or meaning property types? Or will it be that there, there are many, many contextual properties on the relationships or on the, you know, on the triples? So if, uh, if, there are more, if there are a lot of contexts on the relationships, mm. then they're not able to capture. Mm. And those, the reason for them to because limit the number of predicates is because of the optimization they want to do, like DB2. So I talked to one DB2 uh, <coughs> this there, and they say that like um, in order to optimize 
that the optimization Libby to adopt it at that time, maybe like 2014, it was create separate tables for joining, it make it like smaller. I think, I think it's come down to graph versus uh, column. Yeah. Um, and, and, and what they probably want to do is because in, in SP you have married one, married two, so a number of those yeah. things keep on increasing quite a bit. They would limit that because that will show <coughs> as a, an age and they would limit the graph size or yeah. something like that. And, but if you use in column kind of thing, that's no problem. Like no juice of no problem. Yeah. And <coughs> I was thought like for like place graph. So what I wanna highlight here is that the SP has not been optimized in any query engines. And uh, <coughs> and uh, I said that like the ratification the name the name graph, they've been out there like so for too long and they've been well supported by Virtuoso and Blaze Graph. So, Bin, let me ask a question. Um, yes. Uh, on the optimization. Yeah. So, uh, what do you, what do you, uh, what do you think they they haven't been optimized? So, you proposed the idea. Yes. Do you think that the, is the um, or should be the sort of the straightforward at least the first uh, first strategy that you could that you could think of for optimizing? So, what would they have to do? Uh, um, for the query engines. What, yes. If you were going to recommend, what would you say? Yes. So, this is something that I I was thinking of, like um, like discussing with you, that uh, we uh, we came up with the representation, right? And uh, for for that representation, I think we we would like. So, for this one, I maybe I will come back to you like after <coughs> uh, after I I present the optimal version of the SP, so that we know like what. We we know what it takes. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, and I and 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 you have done many work on uh, query optimization, so I was thinking of uh, working with you to optimize the SP queries, and 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 uh, yeah. On the top of that, I think like we're gonna uh, simplify the Sparkle syntax and uh, propose like the new uh, elements to that um, syntax. But we will discuss this later on. So, so despite of that, it's not optimized yet. It's a little faster in uh, Virtuoso, and in PlayScript, it's slower. And this is the range. One thing that I note that is, in uh, in some of the query, you see zero here. That means it doesn't return any result. <coughs> and by that, the authors report they say that they they, they encounter issues with the uh, uh, SP queries. However. Another group that um, this one. <coughs> Another group also uh, evaluate the wiki data, but they say that they do not encounter performance issues with the <coughs> SP. So, so it's more like um, I cannot talk more. It's just like uh, what we can conclude from here is that SP does not cause. Uh, it may not cause performance issues. So I think I think for the people who. Uh, if you don't rewrite the queries after the yeah. because then obviously you will get you will not get any results. So obviously some people right. are, do, are able to do that, but some people do not. Yeah. Mm, so this this work is not uh, published yet. It's uh, it's um, under review with a major revision at a uh, Semantic Web Journal, and in that they evaluated all of both data set like Wikidata and DBpedia. And com <coughs> the conclusion now of this is the SPR data set is among the most compact ones. So across evaluation, all agree that it's very concise. And uh, fast, because the size of it, right? If it is small, it should be, um, it may be faster to load it into the engine. And uh, it gives the best performance in startup. Uh, slow is in virtue, so but not by much of the wiki data queries. So kind of com comparable. <coughs> so I said that like among of all of like our evaluation and external evaluation, the SP comes as the most concise one. And for the performance, it uh, performed reasonably well in virtue so. And uh, best in startup and okay in place <coughs> graph. And because of this reason, SP um, it may have the potential of being optimized, like for the performance gains, even better if it is supported. 
So let me clarify. So, so what do you mean by query performance? <coughs> so that means query, uh, the same queries on the base uh, triple or uh, yeah. with the metadata? With the metadata. So I think, uh, importantly, it will uh, rely a lot on whether the queries themselves are intensive in terms of utilizing the metadata or the contextual information. Uh, you can easily formulate a number of queries that are state forward and they'll just work on uh, you know any RDF model, uh, some sort of simple um, basic RDF model that don't exploit the contextual thing. And you can uh, construct some queries which will really exercise the contextual attributes of properties and uh, make sure that it's not going to make you yeah, lose you or something or make you fall. There is yeah, a, don't, there's don't a maximum over. number on that, your amount that you should take in a day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's only once in several years. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't want you to That's be That's not how it works, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's not how it works. There's a doctor here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Otherwise, all you hear is like when you when you remember Vince's defense, it's about, oh, she's coughing a lot. No, yeah. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay. So, but yeah, I think, I think uh, you know, it would be, nice be nice to have some benchmark. Uh, that uh, really in, is intensive on uh, contextual properties or contextual information, then I think that will be an interesting different thing. And these, I, I don't think the, the query sets that they have are uh, constructed from that perspective in mind. Yeah. So, uh, no, but in general, because you're talking about both the base data uh, representation for the basic RDF model plus the metadata, I would say in the present, <coughs> I mean, uh, emphasize both parts. And I, I think yeah. So, so in, so in fact, in fact, just last point, then I'll shut up. It, it, ends up, it might end up being um, whether the queries are in, uh, in, 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 uh, intensive or relationship in, intensive. Mm -hmm. And the very relationship, you know, yeah, so. So, so one thing I, so, so um, first I was, I think like I was very excited when I saw this evaluation. And uh, second, uh, when I when I saw them, like because I'm really curious, and I look into those queries, and I try to see like what they're doing with evaluation, what they wanted to evaluate, and it turned out that <coughs> these queries they're like specific for one data set. It is not a principal approach for benchmarking queries. So I think a uh, uh, more um, we may need we may need a new benchmark that can address the uh, meta queries rather than like, in the in the evaluation they mix all kind of queries together. Yeah, maybe may a little bit another way. So so what I was basically suggesting was that yeah. right now, right, you're convincing me that many other people who do these kind of things believe in your approach. I just wanted you to give me an independent evidence that I can evaluate. Um, so all of these are the queries they are open, they are public. If you want to reproduce that result, you can do that. But I think like in the, in the, um, in the near future, I think we should have a benchmark independent of the application and it should cover all the cases that they have encountered in their application so that it will give a mm -hmm. clear objective yeah, evaluation. We don't have that thing yet, but and that is something that I'm planning to do together with the query optimization with uh, Kimo4. So, so I'll come back to, so this is more like query performance is, is more, it depends on the query engine. Whether you support it, you optimize it, you get good performance, otherwise you just don't. And, um, and uh, from, the, from the theoretical perspective, I want to focus on more on the size of the, on the, on the representation of the data set, right? When we change the representation, the, the query engine on the top of that changed too in order to support that. So, so the questions become, uh, after, I, after I have seen all of this and they see like how people discuss about this subject, then the question is become like, is it optimal? Can it be improved further? Right? <clears throat> I'm a perfectionist, so, uh, so if so it is not... So, so, so improve further your objective, what is the mm. opti what's your objective? Objective is the size of how compact it is? Um, yeah, when you say improve, improve um, in terms of what? Yes, yes, so, so a good question. So for that, there are many dimensions that can be improved. So one place, <coughs> data set
SSI is just one of that. And um, uh, when I talked to uh, Guha and listened to his uh, keynote on the schema Radosh, why he got a lot of traction on the schema Radosh and why our work is not. So, so in that, his principle is of uh, like in the schema Radosh is the simplicity. Like it must be simple, really, really simple. Like the web master, like people can understand it and <coughs> implement it easily. And somehow I was not really satisfied with the with the the SP. I think it takes certain effort in order to understand it. So for the people who are familiar with that, they say, "Oh yeah, it's, it's, I, I can understand it." But for other people, they may say, "Um," and then they give a polite answer. So. For that, I think like the first thing is I want to make it like the intuition of the SP must be like simple, easy. So that is the improvement. And second, it should be even like compact, given the size of the World Wide Web, right? If we add one more, two more triple to one triple, like in order to represent it, it's, it's not, it doesn't matter if it, we have like 10 triple. But if we have 100 billion triples, it adds 200 million triples. It's a lot of overhead. So for that motivation, um, uh, I try to optimize the representation of the SP. Um, but for only for the syntax and for the for the intuition of it, the semantic of that doesn't change. That means if we able to optimize it, the semantic we 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 still have the benefit of the formal semantics plus the intuition easy to understand and easy to use of the SP. So here it comes. It's like I'm plotting. Um, so if we look at this um, temporal fact that we have subject, predicate, and object, and the start and the end of that, and <clears throat> this is our uh, full representation of the SP. We have the married to one as single property of married to, and for the optimal single property, we we don't have it anymore. So, so for the full representation of that, <coughs> the extra triple, I observe that it is more the syntax of it. It doesn't carry, uh, it doesn't add any like meaningful knowledge to the data consumption consumer. Like when you look at that, you know, oh, this is a same property of the one, but it doesn't add any like meaningful information there. So no, the question is. Yes. No, why is it not uh, adding meaningful information? I mean, like to the data consumer. Because it's more like, it's like oh, this is more like internal structure of the RDF. No, but so you, but you're going to do some string matching here? Uh, no, not, no, not yeah, string. Yeah. Yeah, but that's kind of shady. <laughs> no. You didn't worry about query processing. Maybe you were thinking this might be uh, optimal. But then if you have to index this, you're going to have to do sort of prefixes and all, all that. And, you know, if you, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But but like we'll come to that later on. So it's at this time when I say optimal in terms of like intuition in order to sell this work to people who are not familiar with IDF semantics. So, <coughs> so I think it's partly a space time kind of trade off also, uh, or could, could be. And then we see, look at this merit two became uh, ID equal to one question mark. Now if you merit two, it will become ID question two and so on and so forth, you just won't need to have that extra, um, what I would call like schema level information. So so what it means is like the semantics of that, it is still carry, but it is retrieved with a different syntax. No, but I can probably say that this is part of indexing or something. So I think you're studying the optimization and the semantics. Somehow. So, 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 so when, we, when I'm proposing this, the downside of this is we're gonna change the syntax of the sparkle. So because of that, like like I will discuss later on. So for this representation, what I want to do is to remove that triple while maintaining the syntax sem semantic of that within this one. That means simply like they share the same like predicate, right, and append the ID to that one. So syntactically, I can just use the the URI of that to encode that yeah, information. Yeah, but let me just mention this, that to me that one would look like an index into this. 
So you are you are not doing actual string matching, but quickly indexing or hashing or something of that sort. So it's oh, not I'm not talking about the processing yet. I'm talking about the representation, the syntax of it. But later on, like when you you're talking about processing, like how do we process this one, right? It's like when you read this one, you can easily get that information. But for the for the data set itself, you don't have to carry that semantics. But if it, it's only representation, and you you are missing that important critical. When I'm proposing this one, it comes with certain conditions. It cannot be used with the existing one, right? So so I'll come to that later on. So what I mean is like this URI can be used for the efficient implementation of the RDF data set. I don't, think this, I don't think this is a no-cost alternative. No, it's not no-cost. Okay, it I comes with a cost. It comes with a cost, and that's why I'm saying that my goal is for, for all of this, like, I think like if we, want to, um, uh, if we want to make it accessible and used by everybody, we have to make it like really the concept of this, more on the concept of this one. So now, right, when I think of singular property, what is it? So now I'm, I'm just redefine that, make it really easy to understand that singular property like this one. So now if you want to say, what is, the, what is this? I'm going to say, this is the triple identifier. Simple, easy. And the triple identifier, instead of being like, being like uh, encoded in additional uh, columns, I'm just saying that the triple identifier can be represented by the predicate. And that predicate is called single property. That's it. And the way to form this one is like all of these can be encoded to this one. That's what that's meaning. <coughs> no, I don't know. I like the clarity of what you have on the left. No, no that, is for, the, that is for the semantics. So mm. I got this because I was motivated by uh, Guha's work on the schema dot Like to like some to, to many of us, the SP is not simple, easy to understand. But they all know web service, they all know database. So if we make it in that way, it is very easy for people to create data set. I'm not I'm talking about data publisher. I'm not talking about like query engine or anything else yet. I'm just talking about publishing this data set to the link data or the open uh, knowledge network to that sense. But then, Yes. So, did you was it feedback from the, uh, the the people that ran the experiments that it wasn't intuitive? Because see, if you're coming from semantics of actually, yeah. the one on the left, like PK is saying, yeah. that yeah. says to me, yeah. there's a relationship between married to hash one and married yeah. to yeah. 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 relationship yeah. is called SP. That yeah. to me is a much more natural um, um, yes. Yes. for knowledge of actually yes. than uh, this other thing, right? Yes. So, so it seems to me that if I was doing it, I could say that people should model it on the, on the, as, as, as the way it is on the left. Yes. Mm -hmm. The system can do whatever yes. they want to do yeah, in exactly. terms of compressing data, and they can do physically however they want. Right. Yes. But people should not have to be thinking about this question mark and yes. the whole sign and everything that happens. Yes. Personally, it's not natural for me to do that. Yes. So, so that, like, basically we are talking about a two different group of users. One is like semantic web people. So the left one makes sense. And they not bother with that. <clears throat> but some of them complain about that. Some of them say, oh, why do we need to take one more extra triple? No, but let me give you an extreme <coughs> example. Then you, you're putting me in something like, I'll generate a Huffman code or something like that to efficiently represent. So you are kind of pushing this implementation aspect too far. No, I think here's a way to think about it. Go ahead and model it as in the standard uh, SP way. Mm. Yes. But I, and, and think of it as a, a data-centric view. Yeah. I'll give you a service-centric view mm. that will allow you to compete with the best of the uh, you know, implementations and uh, uh, optimize it, you know, sto save you the storage if you wanted to and uh, perform as well. Right, so I'm just, and, and maybe, so it's possible that this optimized thing is not something that you're asking a data modeler to do. You no, but it's a different ball game, and this may not be no, the for, right for, way. I mean, this may not be the way, way where people would yeah. model it, but this will be a way. We have something it's to it's like people yeah. might encode the data and work on, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, 
encoded uh, form of the data, right? It is possible, right? Yeah, but I'm saying that the, when you go to encoding, right, then I will go to data structures and do all kinds of fancy things. But that's not the direction you want people to be thinking in terms of. So, so, yes. So, sir. go back to the first slide, please. The first slide? The, no, the, the previous one, the previous yes. one. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, so, I think in this case here, in, on the traditional singleton property, you could have something that is exactly the same as what you have on the other one. You can have married to question mark ID yeah. one, yeah. and at the top you would have married to question one ID one, uh, uh, question mark ID one, uh, RDFSP married to. So yeah. you could you can yeah. have the same representation, yeah. and it's just uh, it's, it's just a different name that you give the predicate yeah. pretty, pretty much. Yeah. I think what you are arguing is that. Uh, if we were willing to change the syntax of queries and things like this, we could do away with the top triple by having a shortcut, if you wish, an implicit, yes. implicit representation yes, 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 that yes. the instance, I'm mm. going to call it like this, the instance yeah. of, the, uh, of the predicate yeah. also carries the type. Yes. Uh, but and you can dissociate the two. I mean, you you can uh, you can link, look at this in two different steps, and maybe the second step is not necessary because if you get if it's too complicated to change the syntax, or you, if you get too much pushback, I mean, it's easy enough to stick with the traditional version. Yes. Yeah, so this implicit the uh, predicate encoded only in URI. Then yes. you say that yes. you don't need explicit. Yes. Uh, and my question is that whether really removing that statement mm. influencing mm. Uh, actually performance? No, no. Actually, when I say like we don't need it because it can be, it is implied within the URI of the uh, yes. SP. So it, when you need it, you can retrieve it, but you don't have to. Yeah, but serialize but it in another it set. No. So, the, the reason I add this one is mostly for uh, Dr. Guha, but uh, he's not here today. So, um, the reason for this is that the purpose of this is to make it compatible with the URI, which can be applied in the RDFA. Yeah, I fully so, agree. It's possible. It's possible. Mm. But my question, and it's nice, it's mm. a good idea. Yeah. My question is that how much this representation affects the performance by removing just such a statement, such an explicit mm. a statement mm. that you are, on the other hand, you say that we should make oh, I got SP uh, yeah. easier to understand. And yeah. I think left <coughs> representation is easier mm. to understand mm. than implicit mm. representation. Just. And I think if you go a bit farther, uh, if you have, you, you could, one could argue that, uh, well, that could be a general principle for representing instances, mm. and so you could you could have instances of classes. You could yes. derive instances of classes yeah. by yeah. saying question mark id yes. on the class. Yes. Uh, but I don't think you want to go there <laughs> because <laughs> no, that no. that it doesn't serve your purpose. But yeah. that would be a generalization of the yeah. oh the instance. URI carries the semantics of the class or of the property. Yeah, yeah. And and um, uh, it may be confused for people when I use the optimals here, but mostly it's optimal for the understanding. It's for the for the easiness and simplicity of the of of the approach. And it and uh, for that purpose, I want to use this work mainly for the uh, RDFA. For the existing, like um, the, the next step is, I want to talk to Guha and see how we, this can be adopted in in the schema Roche. because he said that like schema Roche needs that needs a mechanism uh, where they have like more than fifty percent or ninety percent of the data is metadata. So because of that, like I, I bring this point so that I can discuss with him. But uh, luckily, he couldn't join us today, so I'm gonna talk to him like, later on. So when I say that it's um, it is uh, easy to understand because it borrowed the existing concept and it's very popular that um, <coughs> that uh, REST API. So in the URI we have parameters, so simply like that. 
and it um, we can have a number of parameters. It doesn't have to be one, and <coughs> the URIs are be referenceable and can be crawled and indexed. We have a concept and easy to adapt and compatible with existing app. No, see, so that is, this is for selling to no, the no, mixing base. semantics and syntax. So are you, are you going to say that the properties are now uh, parameterized functions or yes. something like that? So, so <coughs> in the <coughs> so now, right? For the for the uh, URI of the same property, we add parameters to this one, and it serves multiple purpose. So the next one, so this is the general, this is the the, the REST API, a typical REST API. So the next slide. So here. <clears throat> Another re one is for serving the RDFA. The on the other side, I want to do one thing that fundamentally changed the way we, rep we we query with Sparkle. So here it comes. No, so, 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 so property is no longer an atomic name. It is actually has a structure. Yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, just, just let that's me. That's not you. simply. I'm, I'm confused to mm. hear. I yeah, think. I so thinking. you need yeah. one parameter. Mm. to make your predicate unique. Mm. That's yeah. the principle of singleton yes. property. Yes, yes. And right. to this unique singleton uh, property, you attach all the metadata that you want to attach exactly. without any limitations. Exactly. So now I think that if you start attaching the metadata directly to, uh, uh, or if you start putting the, the semantics <coughs> of your metadata directly into these uh, parameters. So one would argue that you do one or the other, but you don't do both. So you don't have subsequent triples that relate this, um, this singleton <coughs> predicate to the values of the metadata, because yeah. arguably yeah. they are here. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, first, we do not attach all kind of metadata to the URI of the same property. So I, the reason I put like two of them here, ID, DS, because I think that some of them would be mandatory and I would like to propose the ID and the DS. And the rest of that, they are they, they're not supposed to be there in, in this model. So that's why like here I put like two of that instead of one. So that means we can add one more in here. And the reason what I want to do is for to, to eliminate the use of name graph. So name graph is used for grouping a set of triples. So if we add one more parameter here, say DS, then like Yago 2S, then we will be able to group all of the triple of the Yago 2S together. And no, so, so let me give you my objection. So you're basically yeah. telling me that I take the fourth <coughs> column of name graph and stick it into mm. the property name and I'm done. See, that's not what you want. You had a clean separation. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. You are now actually just making me do some syntactic squashing to get three columns. Yeah. And that's not and what you want to do. <laughs> and killing the name graphs is not an objective of yeah. yours. Oh, it no, no, no. It's, it's I think your clarity is what trumped every other performance yeah. that you had. So, so that's why like, this is like, um, this comes with the new specification. And this is going to, I, I, the reason I put it here is mostly for the open network but no, no, I'm, I'm okay if you, under the hood of your implementation, right, you do whatever you want. You splice whatever names you yeah. want. I don't care. To me, outside, right, mm -hmm. should, just explain to me only with your left part. Yeah. Inside, for efficiency, you, mm -hmm. you do whatever you want. Yeah. You do all kinds of fancy coding. Actually, go back to name graph and implement it. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Right? But, but don't sully the clear, clarity of your thing. So don't expose this as a way that I should conceptualize your work. Because then I think I'm confused. Oh, okay, 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 let's see. I, I think like for this work, I may like need like uh, more information presented here to no, you can just say that avoid it, that confusion. No, my, here is a model, mm. and here is an efficient implementation which is under the hood. Mm. And you're going to go back to data structures and algorithm mm. and say, I'm going to splice these strings and do some Huffman coding, all kinds of fancy things to get very efficient processing. Mm -hmm. That is fine. But but don't show this as a competing oh, one okay, for okay, the other okay. one. Oh, it's not competing. It's, yeah. it, I, I'm showing it as the extension of like the future work. It's not a com competition. Sorry. 
I wouldn't even go there in future work, and I don't think yeah. I don't think you want to say, well, and we need a template now, and the DS is going to be mandatory and something like this. Don't go there. Just stick to the exactly. basics. The, the, the singleton property requires a unique identifier to be added to the predicate. Here is a, an elegant way of making this happen. And that's it. So ID yeah. Yeah. equals a unique so ID, and that's it. How if you present this as a implementation alternative? So uh, and in a particular context, particularly if you wanted to get into RDFA and being able to consistency. No, you, you can say, yeah. uh, here's one way to realize, uh, but not, not, don't, I mean, I think what they're saying is don't present this as a model yeah. uh, for which you're going to have to present uh, uh, semantics and all the rules. Uh, that's done with SP. For this, if you want to say, look, I uh, could even improve upon uh, my performance. I could improve upon this storage space. And you have, uh, you're going to present additional data, uh, you know, uh, with uh, you know evaluations with optimized, uh, so-called optimized. Maybe the term optimized, you can rethink. Yeah. But um, you just say that uh, here is a way I uh, could uh, realize SP, um, and uh, I could be everybody's, uh, yeah, you know, right, storage right. space and so on and so forth. Just going to present <coughs> as a model alternative. Hmm. So another reason for me to to put uh, this to the syntax of the SP is like, it's like. Every everybody can publish data to the web, to the link data, to the open, to the OKN. But how do we ensure the uniqueness of the single property? That means it requires the coordination among the data publisher, right? That is so hard. So I use this URI for two purposes. Like one is like <coughs> to to minimize the coordination among the data publisher. That means the least thing they're going to do is to come up with a DS name, a unique DS name for themselves. This is simple, I think. And the second is the ID, right? It doesn't have to be a, a UUID, um, like a unique ID. It only needs to be unique to that DS. No, no but, but, but the property name is itself a URI, right? Yes. So the DS is actually a part of that. Yes. So we don't so, need to So by right? this, so, so, so just by, by using syntax for the URI, then like uh, we we uh, address that kind of coordination issues. So what do you uh, the more it goes, and the more confused I am, yeah. I guess. Uh, I think I, I see this as uh, uh, possibly an elegant way of query or a compact way of querying, and maybe that I'm just restating what's been said mm. before. So instead of having to, to add additional statements in the Sparkle query to say, and the married to uh, question mark uh, ID one, ha, uh, DS, Yago, and something, and, and start date, and end date, and blah, blah. You could stick these query parameters uh, onto the same thing, and they would be interpreted. So that would be a syntactic. Yeah. A syntactic sugar, if you wish, yeah, yeah. for streamlining uh, the thing, mm. and you would take care of this under the hood. Mm. But but again, it doesn't change the model, and no, it the, the, the only thing that you that is required for this to work is the ID, mm. and and I would require the ID to be unique yeah. in all circumstances. I think that that's the most straightforward way, and uh, and if it's unique. Uh, university, it's going to be unique within the data set, of course. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think like this is uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, suggestions. Like like we don't have to follow it, but there's some like good practice, right? So when we think of the vision of the open knowledge network, like when Guha discussed about the effort for coordinating people, like for the common URI to be shared with. And he said that it is just impossible. And the reason for me to come up with this is like, like <coughs> that is the one way to require the mean to, to address his concern. So that's why, like I, like I, I think like it would be good if he's here. Um, so I'm presenting this for the mainly for the schema.org and the RDFA. So basically, it doesn't change the data model of the SP. It is just one materialization of the URI how it can be used in practice. Theoretically, it doesn't change anything. Yes. 
Uh, with respect with all your talk that I agree, fully agree, I want to advocate you <laughs> that um, it, it, it's a great idea to encode some of the triples inside this URI. But with the fact that, for example, a, a, a data set also might have a full URI. And also you can uh, uh, you can encode other triples like the time span, like the other provinces uh, mm. inside the URI yeah. if you want to do yeah. So that's a possibility. Yeah. That's yeah. That, that, that is make a very complicated <laughs> machine that you don't understand. That's okay. Yeah, I, but I got you it. You play yes. around with it. Yeah, I got it. So, uh, oh yeah. Um, yeah, the way you can, uh, let's should move on. Yeah. But basically, uh, suppose you have linked open data and you want to re redo the whole linked open data in uh, SP form, then you could use this strategy for, you know, different bubbles. I have Yago 2 yeah. bubble, I have this other cluster, and uh, within the cluster I don't have to, getting universal ID is hard, so within the cluster <coughs> I'll have a unique ID and this is one way of it. But, but I think more people have to think about it and see whether they want to adopt or not. This is a yeah. proposal out there yeah. for a particular way of realizing it for a particular yeah. purpose. So, so uh, for, uh, for this one, right, I found that um, I didn't like the name graph in that sparkle. That's what I'm thinking of. Like, like to the I'm trying to align this to the vision of the linked data with metadata in it and the OKM. So, so this is like the proposal for that one. And to what to the extent of that work, like we gonna like what I wanna do next is I shouldn't discuss it here. But but basically, I wanna I wanna like uh, propose a new syntax for the Sparkle queries that can take the metadata into the, into account rather than just the pattern at this point. And the, the, yeah, the really I am also proposing the new I'm also proposing the new um, uh, best practice for the linked data that serves that purpose. But I cannot put yeah, all of them. That is a very hard here. sell. Came up for yeah. saying something. Actually, just a quick, quick thing. So, so assuming married to was um, was a property that had, let's say, a sub property of some type, and uh, so I mean, I mean the original married to. So then I can see that you you have the extended uh, married to if you. Uh, if yes, came up for. Uh, yes, came up for. So for the yes, 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 I do. So for the reasoning, I think it will come to the next part. And then like uh, the next part, I'm going to talk about the, the reasoning, not our, but uh, it may it may address your question. So for that, just go in like, yeah, yeah. Just for um, quickly, um, I'm just describing a tool that I, I developed for, for transforming the existing data set like uh, DBpedia, uh, bio to RDF, those that are sent to the SD. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, so for the optimal SP triple, you can see that like for the same number of quad, we have the same number of SP triples. And for the original like syntax of the SP, we have like three times of it. So this is if somebody is looking for the compact representation in terms of like serialization, they may look into it. If you can see, it's a 12 billion versus 4 billion. It's a, it's a big, big like triple size. <coughs> so one benefit of that at this point. So, <coughs> so coming back to the goal that we have earlier, like. Uh, the five requirements, like maybe like later on, like like offline, like I would like to get a feedback. Like, do you agree with this one? For with, if the SP representation meet the requirements or not? Uh, if not, then I continue to, to improve it. <laughs> uh, this is my goal. Like, I, I I would not stop until I get until I get your, your yes on that one. Um, so came up on. So now I'm presenting the next part, which is the reasoning. See, now you put more worries into my head. <laughs> when I go back to the previous one, right? You, you go back to the two slides before. So now he, uh, I go one more uh, thing. So I basically saying that quads is a good implementation of SP? No, 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 quads, no, 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 no
It's existing. Works. That's existing. No, that's what I'm saying. But but from here, right? I infer that if if your optimal SP is as good as quad, that means SP provides SP triples are giving you a good conceptual model for which quad is actually a great implementation. <coughs> so so are you saying that the people have actually done a good job already? No, uh, the quad comes with many disadvantages. It doesn't not it doesn't have the formalism for representing the triple. Yeah, when I look at just those, those optimal SP triples and quad triples and every every adjacent value being identical, right? And that's the conclusion I reach. The uh, so so I I should talk about the assumption before that. Mm -hmm. So the assumption of that is. Uh, in one of the wiki data slide, I think like earlier, it says that for one quad. See, the quad has more space. Uh, it has more. No, yes, exactly. Same but the same percentage is for your answer. Quad, 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 I think has uh, only three, uh, you know, items uh, columns. This is hmm. for the comparison. People are comparing, even though they are not comparable. Mm -hmm. They say that SP Tech Two quad. And to, to that respond, I put that the other slide. So it's not twice. It's comparable. So there's no problem. But good catch though, it's small and then you do that means you totally understand it as a happy. So there's no problem. I think we wanted to show that she optimized as P triples as much as optimized as the quad. That's the point. No. Yeah. Uh, the point is the number of quads and number of SP, uh, you know, optimal okay. SP uh, uh, can be the same, but quad takes a lot more space because it yes. has uh, multiple more columns. Yes. Uh, and uh, this one does not. No, my concern but, is that, but, but you went and changed the URI in between the property, you made it longer. No, I mean, yeah, that's you, did. You, you put that question but, mark. But people don't care about that. that. They are just caring whether like, it adds extra to no, that. that. that, that I think okay. So, so I'm talking about the evaluation one of the, we have done. One of the things that they simply put uh, is uh, uh, the storage for anything that, you know, and any of the options. Right. So and that this is, is simply better to show way, that yeah. there is a SD storage alternative which is comparable to, uh, which is smaller than uh, quad storage. That's all. There are many other problems that may it, the other problems it may create, and I don't think that this will be answered yet. So, so here, right? Okay, maybe let me not divert you. I think we'll get back to this later. Yeah. yeah. Okay, go on. Yeah. So basically, like uh, we can we can do we can do the job that NameGraph does, plus we don't have the disadvantages that they have. So that's the point. <coughs> so next, we're, we're going to probably come back to say and say this is more like an appendix as opposed yeah. to uh, yeah. Okay. So. Um, I'm just taking a break. Yeah, let's move on to reasoning. How many is left? left? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One third of that. But I'm not going to present all of them, so I'm going to go quick on them. So, <laughs> so <clears throat> for the reasoning, right? So I start with this by, let's say, now, like, uh, with the fav fav favorite question from uh, Olivia, he always said, oh, so what? <laughs> and then here's the so what of the SP representation. So now you're represented, and so what, right? And, and this, um, uh, the answer for that so what. Um, so when we represent, the, benef the major benefit of the SP representation is the formalism that we can represent the semantics of the single property in the model theory. And by that, it enables theoretical investigation on the SD model. And the reasoning is one aspect of that. And now I'm presenting the reasoning. Uh, later on, it's going to be on the graph uh, model. But if I don't have enough time, then I'll just skip it. And then I will present it like um, uh, with a committee if, if, if they want to. I guess they did um, So uh, for the uh, motivating example here, that <coughs> so in the in the data, right? We represent the metadata for the data triple. 
But there are some there are like cases where the even the schema triple have their uh, metadata too. For example, uh, if we look at this example, we say that uh, Jack Hurley is the he he's a YouTube employee, and uh, YouTube employee is a subclass of Google employee. Um, this example I, I, I took it from uh, another reasoning paper. With uh, in that they provide the data set. So because the Google acquire YouTube, all of the uh, YouTube employee become the Google employee, and the acquisition took place in 2006. So that's how we got the data. That Chad Hurley, uh, he works at uh, he he is a YouTube employee from 2005 to 2010. After the acquisition. He, he, he didn't, he stopped being a, a CEO. And um, <coughs> from this kind of uh, information, what can we infer? This one. This is a temporal reasoning. That uh, we say that like uh, Jet Hurley is a type of YouTube and then YouTube employee is a subclass of Google employee. Quickly, we can infer that Jet Hurley is a Google employee too, right? And um, we can say from this as a human, we say that oh, he's a, he he worked for Google from 2006 to 2010. So this is what we want to infer. And um, and Jet Hurley, he works for YouTube from 2006 to 2010 as well. <coughs> Question is, how do we infer such an information? And uh, the next work, I'm going to provide the answer for this example. And uh, for this, I have presented so many times, I'm going to do it really quickly. That here we distinguish the generic property and then serum property. And a part of that is the regular property, which is not associated with any context. Ah, example. So this is the same property. Because of that, this is a single one triple. And this is the generic triple because a CEO is a generic property, and type or its person is a regular triple because it's not associated with any sim any context. <coughs> so I don't, you know, are these different types of triple. Is that usual? I don't know. <coughs> General, uh, singleton. What are the three types we have there? Right. Um, sure. So it's like so a triple and a context that three cases, right? The first one is like, if the, if the triple is not associated with the context, we say it um, generic triple. If it is associated with the context, we say that it's a single triple. And if it is not decided yet, right? Like it doesn't, like it is, at the time of creation, it is not associated, it's not decided to associate context or not. We call it context agnostic triple or regular triple. And here, so so the type of triple is based on the association with the context, and um, and this one, this is like uh, CEO is the generic property. It is a is a generic property. <coughs> here I'm just recording the concept of uh, mapping function. Like a CEO is a, is a regular property too, so it is mapped to a set of pairs. So you see that CEO is mapped to Larry Page, Alphabet, and then generally in YouTube. Uh, in the single mapping function that we defined earlier, like uh, one single property is mapped to uh, one pair of entities, one pair. And generic property uh, here is uh, you can think of that as a class. It is equivalent to the class where uh, it has two uh, same property instances in this case. <coughs> but this is a two step, right? So the, you have a CEO, and then CEO happens to be sub property or works for, right? Just from this data set, only two of them. So you see you a property also or not? See which one? CEO is a property by itself, right? Yeah. So that is actually a two-step process. You have two instances, then that. So these are single turn property of CEO, and then CEO is a sub property of works for. Oh yes, yes, okay. that's right. But um, I, do, I don't mention it here because it's not it's not here yet. 
Okay. We're not, we not for that uh, subclass, uh, sub-property relationship yet. But later on, yes. Okay. This is the hardest job that I ever done with this fraud. <laughs> So from this one, we say that the, mm -hmm. that CEO general property, it uh, has two instances, ID1 and ID2. And um, the, um, the general property is mapped to two instances, two pair of the same property. <coughs> and uh, for the simple interpretation of, so the reason I present this is that I want to I want to derive a set of rules, and in which rules I will prove the sound and completeness of that. So that's why, like I, I, uh, I put the in interpretation here. So you can see that uh, I'm just I'm just putting the I extension introduced earlier, uh, sim extension earlier, and then generic extension here. So, <clears throat> so the first. The first rule in order to validate the triple, so anybody can create a triple, right? But our job is to validate if their triple is valid or not to be used for the, for the reasoning. So <clears throat> from this triple, CEO ID1 is the same property of CEO. That means like the first one is the same property, the second one is a generic property. And in order to recognize it, we create <coughs> We created two rules. The first one saying that CEO one here is a same property, and the second rule saying that the CEO is a generic property. And uh, for the third rule, <coughs> we say that like uh, CEO is <coughs> one same property CEO, and then that one is asserted between Jack Hurley and then you two. So this is the interpretation that we have, like I extension. Make it a, uh, no. What is that noise? Kemofo, are you, are you taking the call? No, no, I think someone is in yeah, there. No, I'm not taking the So here, like we show that uh, <coughs> one example saying that the singular extension of a property is a, is a one element of the generic extension is indicatable. <coughs> and because it is a part, so uh, this pair is one element of the CEO because of that, that make it a triple. So here comes the, the, the third rule saying that, um, oh, you see the rule. So uh, you were talking about the sub property of. Can I, can I have it when I'm speaking? Mm, yes. That's replacement for it. But, but it, it can be like that. Yes, fine. No, try there, then. It, says it can't hurt anyway. The, the condition you are in. Mm -hmm. So you, you. Yeah, you did. Oh my god, I, I, I drink that much already? <laughs> yeah, you go to. You have to lie down after this. Hmm. So, uh, Dr. Prasad, you were asking mm -hmm. about the sub property of here, it comes here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> CEO is a sub-property of a work for. So because of that, it also like same property of the super property. Mm -hmm. And domain and range, simple. Um, I'm going to use the, the rule, the, the two rules, like three and, six, three and four, for uh, temporal reasoning here. So <clears throat> going back to the motivating example, we have that uh, he's a YouTube employee during this time, and then he's a subclass of this time. So what we need to derive is this one. So this is the uh, motivating scenario. 
So in order to arrive at this one, first we need to represent this in the form of SP. Here it is. Uh, tab ID 1 and then subclass ID 2. <coughs> So I use the concept like inference chain in which <coughs> so the example of that. So if you look at the first part, oh here it is. So the first part chat holder is type YouTube employee. That by using the root uh, sp3, we say that chat holder is type YouTube employee. And the second is YouTube employee subclass of Google employee. This can be derived from the sp3. <clears throat> and um, from the two rules, we arrive at the at the triple say that Jack Holly is a type of Google employee. But in order to represent that relationship, we use the extension only one. There's only one <coughs> type of the in this case just give it a ten that say that Jack Holly is a type of Google employee and it is single property and. The purpose of this chain is to track the provenance of the info triple, which has not been done before. So, <clears throat> so here we say that um, the intuition of this is like <coughs> if the triple is extracted from one source, you get the provenance of that. And then you know that, oh, it's extracted. And then if you want to validate, you can see the algorithm if it's correct or not. But if the triple is inferred, how do we track that? And this is how we just use the SP for it. And I call it it's a chain because you can say it's a chain of like only single property. And uh, I generalize this into like A type B and uh, B subclass of C. And this is how we derive it. This is the RDFS rules. There are many, uh, many other RDFS rules, but I choose only one to present it here. The rest of that can be done in a similar manner. So when you say proof means, uh, when you say provenance means you're saying you're going to hang on to the proof. Is, is that what you're implying? I didn't quite understand what derived from means. Derived from that means that this triple mm -hmm. is derived from the previous triple. To provide, it's like you, you trace the lineage like where it comes from. So that's proof, right? I think it's not a, it's, it's more like innovation than proof. <coughs> it's like when we, like in the BKR, we, we, we have a triple and we extract it from this article and then we say that this one is derived from that article. In a similar manner, we say that this triple is precisely derived from these two triple in that rule. But I don't put the rules here. It just make it out of the context. So for now, we say that it's derived from the other two because these two <coughs> are the premises. <coughs> so uh, previously, I presented the uh, syntax-based rules, and um, for the syntax-based rule, we use them for the context-based reasoning. This is the this is the, root, the, the the generalized rules that we have. Uh, if if we have the triple is annotated with two values, annotation values, and what is the annotation value for the info triple? What can it infer? So here, like uh, x, a, y, they are meta, meta meta variable, and l is the um, lattice. Lattice is the partially ordered set of annotation value. And uh, V1, V2 is a part of that set. So why am I combining it uh, using both the operations? So this is for conjunctive operator, and then this is <coughs> disjunctive. Yeah, I understand that. But wh mm. why, for the same antecedent, why do I have two different conclusions or two different no. operators? <coughs> for the same one? Yeah, I mean, you have the top is exactly the same. But why am I reaching these two extreme conclusions? <coughs> There are cases that we use, it's not both, it's either of that. There are cases like temporal, we use one, and for certainty we use one. I will show you later on. Like yeah, for reasoning with time, right? We use this one for, for time. Yeah, so, so I think what I would suggest is, 
the proof system that you write, right? You should define an abstract lattice and use one operator. And then when you instantiate, right, for time it will be instantiated one way and for uncertainty it will be instantiated some other way. Otherwise, I think this is uh, going to be messy. For, <clears throat> it's like, um, we use two, of, two here because there are, I think in the paper we have like two, uh, one is for conjunctive case, one is for disjunctive case. But I got the point. <coughs> Sorry, I have to get back to this. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the last one. <laughs> no, you, you need to be cautious here. Yeah, yeah. 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 But so, going back to what you were saying, I think yeah. it's, a, it's really a per use case uh, scenario that needs to be done because you, so you mentioned temporal reasoning and it has some constraints. Uh, you could do, you could have exactly the same thing about uh, spatial reasoning, and in, in some cases maybe the intersection of two regions or something like this. Uh, but you could have also specific cases about legal reasoning. Let's say you know uh, federal law uh, versus local law and things like this. So. Um, it's really a uh, case by case uh, type of reasoning. But what you're presenting here is probably the two extremes of, uh, of what can be. Uh, it's a general mechanism, but the general mechanism doesn't apply anywhere. It's only local mechanisms derived from this general mechanism that are going to be applicable. So we don't have a single operator for all the lattice. So here we are just proposing two of them. They're not like either you have to use this or that. So here are just like the cases for, we don't have the representation for all kind of contexts. It's just impossible at this point. So we are just proposing like two of that. Maybe like one may propose many other operators. But in this case, we, we are just using like conjunctive and disjunctive. Like some people may propose more. But, but for the context, like for the, for the context, when we say context here, we limit it to three in this case. What is prominent? No, I think I'm going to clarify to you yeah. how to set it up. I think this is confusing yeah. and I, I can mm -hmm. tell you how to do it in yeah. a better way. Yeah. So, so in this case, uh, we just consider, like in this example, we're just talking about a time, the temporal reasoning here. <coughs> and among the two operators, we choose the disjunctive for it because like with time, right, we use the first <coughs> formula, first rules. <coughs> we have the first triple with the um, t like one time one time interval, and the other one is a another time interval, and the t five and t six. Like you said, that like it has to it has to exist, right? But by defining that, it is the it is the intersection or overlap between the two. That means they must exist. Uh, when um we started half an hour late, and even after mm -hmm. that, we are, this is the longest uh, already. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is, this, this is going to be like in five minutes. Mm -hmm. So, um, where we were? Yeah, so for the question that you had earlier, so he, it, it, the assumption is that it already exists. <coughs> so, this is an example that we had earlier, where we have A type B. B, uh, B sub plus of C, we arrive at this. And <coughs> we add the temporal information into that SB. And this is uh, from 5 to 6 is attached to the type uh, IK. And this is the, this is the, uh, from the previous example. So <coughs> for this rules, if we have Jack then this is more intuitive that Jack Hurley's YouTube employee and from 2005 to 2010 and YouTube employee is a subclass of Google employee from 2006 to 17. 
this is then there exists one single property for that it um, <coughs> it is from 2006 to 10 I think this is a mistake it's a mistake is a 2010 <coughs> and uh, this is this proves derive the contextual information for the <coughs> infer triple with respect to time and using the SDJ. We can extend this to the rest of the RDFS rules can be class hierarchy, hierarchy property hierarchy and um, Beside time, it can also be applicable to any other type of annotation values like uncertainty or provenance, and you define that operators. So it's not standard. Like we are just showcase that it works. And uh, for the implementation of that, I think I'm gonna skip. <coughs> um, one concern that people have is the performance of the reasoner because it's really a major issue. But uh, from our experiment, like with Oracle, it, it shows the concern because of this. Like for the highest one, it took, it in for 200 million, it took like 13 hours. In our implementation, you can say that for 8 billion of triple, it took like 40 uh, minutes. So uh, this to say that it can be efficiently implemented. And we did that. Yeah. What do you argue? How do you argue about completeness or reason? Oh, we're not, we're not talking about completeness. In this case, it was implemented only for time, for temporal reasoning? For, uh, no, 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 not for, not for context-based reasoning. It is for syntax-based because most of the triples generated because of the syntax rules. The, for the contextual rules, they don't generate a lot of data. It's very small. And, yeah. I'm kind of lost, I guess. So, so this this rules, the like we implement the syntax based rules, the rule from one to six, but the additional rules here we do not. Okay, okay. okay. The derivations <coughs> where all the contextual information matches would probably lead to very small results. <coughs> where you have during this time that you know where you're married to kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, but nevertheless, there will be part of very large data sets and that, okay, this will end uh, and give you some result and then a large data set. Uh, in that sense, you need to capture that. But maybe there are, there's more to be done to just yeah. uh, kind of, like in search techniques, you uh, do filter first, you do, uh, you know, uh, limit first mm -hmm. and then do joins. Mm -hmm. That kind of techniques might be done. Mm -hmm. It's not really done. So uh, for that, like that is the uh, theoretical investigation for the reasoning, and uh, because of the time limited, uh, I will skip the, the graph part. And uh, <coughs> and this is the last slide for the comparison of the existing work. That uh, I put some of the um, dimension here, so that we can have like a quite like a rough picture of like how the existing approach will compare to the SP. <coughs> the major, um, so as I said, the main advantage of the SP is the formalism with the model theory and, and I think that is favor favorable by many people. And uh, second of that, because we provide the formalism, we are able to propose the syntax-based rules. The purpose of the rules, they're not just for the sake of it. The, the syntax-based rules are for validating the data set. And the contextual rules, they're for deriving meaningful knowledge to data consumer. And these are the two major advantages of the SP approach compared to the entry, the replication, or the net graph. Uh, yes, the rest of that is not that, not that significant. <coughs> so uh, back to our like, goal is uh, for the thesis statement. Um, yeah, I'm just putting back the slide.
for for the discussion. So, thank you. Kahan. I mean, arguably, <coughs> compact, you know, is not necessarily proven, right? So, it's, it's compact only if you take some strategies. Otherwise, it's not necessarily <coughs> the most compact. It is. Strategy. It is. It's, uh, it's uh, compact. Um, evaluated in both theory and like experimental. And, um, well, how do you say it is compact if you look at all the other, other people's review? <coughs> oh, they say that SP is compact, it's the most compact. And because I'm a perfectionist, so even though they say that it's good, I still want it to be the best. I want to improve it further when we could. So that doesn't mean that it's not compact when I did not provide the optimization. The compact one, that one is uh, with the evidence from other groups and our group results as well. And the formalism, uh, it is a model theory and the rules that we have, the two set of rules. <coughs> and, uh, and for the third one, for the third one, uh, Dr. Dr. Prasad, Dr. Burden Heider, both said that they're not, uh, they're not sold for the uh, motivation of this work. And uh, I, I totally agree with that. And because the, my motivation for this work is more on like, <clears throat> first, because we say that knowledge graph. So, and, 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 my priority is on the foundation. So if you can, if you just say it is a graph, you do not provide a foundation. It's not really a graph yet. Formally defined is a graph. Because of that, I wanted to, I wanted to investigate if we can do that. And yes, we can. With that one, um, <clears throat> so my 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 uh, my philosophy of that is. The contextualized knowledge graph is new, and uh, with the formalism, it enables us to investigate the, the theoretical characteristic of this graph. So, if we have the, a solid foundation, we we will be able to study that graph, and and because uh, of the limited time, I I. I implemented the uh, shortest path algorithm, test algorithm, just to demonstrate that the path, that the graph can be implemented efficiently. I'm not talking, of, I'm not claiming anything on the superior of this graph compared to others. Uh, I think like uh, my claim on this one is like we provide a foundation for theoretical investigation on this one because I think without this one, we won't be able to study this graph. So, so does it does it um, does it answer your like address your concern that <coughs> for the motivation of this work? Like I don't have no, the way, okay, the I don't way, have the, the application I, for that, but I'm more into the foundation setting. No, the way I was expecting you to connect was that. So in the theoretical foundation, you laid out certain queries that needs to be carried out. And now, shortest path is a building block to implement some of those queries. Mm -hmm. And so the first building block you have built, and maybe you may have a few more that can be used to actually efficiently implement these top level semantic queries. Yeah. And I think something that might be more convincing also yeah. is, uh, so shortest path, if you don't, Qualify it. Mm -hmm. It just means that it's it's a, just a reachability issue. Reachable. Yes. yes. And and that's kind of not in the same ballpark as the uh, the Big semantics yeah. because we're not talking we're, we're talking going there mm -hmm. the fastest. We're not going going there Meaning by good. specific uh, path, if you wish. So I think today uh, you can also prove that its shortest path within some semantic constraints. Yes. Now we, we're talking. Now we have something that, that becomes interesting and more in line with the rest. Yeah. I mean, just shortest path is boring, and uh, yeah. it's, it's been done before. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Yeah. And, 
and uh, I think like I, I did I dig into this and see like like what kind of graph based algorithm that we can leverage the semantics when we are performing that algorithm. So one of that could be like the like applying it in the reasoning settings. But instead of joining the tables, we can just traverse the graph and and um, and leverage the semantics of the nodes in order to decide which one that we should go. So that is just my thought. I have not done it yet. So so yes. So um, can you look at the screen now, and then I will explain to you yeah, what this graph is. So um, which, which line number you talking about? Seventy nine. Oh, seventy nine. Yeah. <clears throat> uh -huh. Okay. So you are talking about the graph that you have So in this one, um, for the for the RDF uh, framework, right, or like yeah. other 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 documents too, they talk about like the diagram. The, they say that it's a set of triple, and the subject and the object are, are mapped to nodes, and the predicate links the subject and the object, right? So that is the that is the, the, the intuitive diagram that we use. It's not formally defined, but that is how we perceive. And uh, if you if you look at the the, 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 the graph on the left, like uh, Clinton post post one president and then it is successor <clears throat> so the um, uh, my motivation for this work is from this graph saying that you can see that the graph is totally disconnected that we are the from Clinton yeah. to Bush we don't have any path <coughs> connecting them is because of this disconnectivity I'm proposing the one on the right so instead, yeah, no, no, I, I understand. Yeah, no, I, I understand what you're saying. I was just trying to. Uh, no, so first of all, the, the thing on the uh, uh, left, yes, if you, uh, if you model as a regular graph, it's yeah. a model, model as a hyper graph, then it's a different, then it's not disconnected. Mm. But what I'm saying is, and, uh, I, I, so to make this like a third, uh, I don't know if this was a, a topic or whatever, all I'm saying is that what you did. But it was uh, okay. straightforward that it would be a graph. In other words, um, there, should, there, there was nothing to verify there, in my opinion. Uh, so when you, you, you took something, you added more triples based on mm -hmm. it. So the, the result was going to be a graph. I guess yeah. you, know, you, you presented it like you were trying to um, verify that it was going to be a graph. It, it was going to be a graph. It couldn't have been anything else, I guess. Oh, I well, anyway, never mind. I was just trying to figure yeah. out what, what, whatever yeah. was a major point to be made there or just a minor point. Yeah. <coughs> and again, I, I think I see that more as possibly an implementation or an optimization <coughs> issue. For example, if there was a way of first testing very quickly if there's any relation between a subject and an object, uh, now it it would be interesting to say, well, I, I test this first, and if there's any relation, any path between the two, now I can do my Sparkle query and I can bother to, to check if uh, there's a semantic, semantically valid path, mm -hmm. if you wish. But other than this, um, it, to me, it still, it still doesn't stand out mm -hmm. as a major need that, uh, for which we, we have demonstration that... Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the, yeah, that's needed. Hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I agree because like I don't have the application for it yet, mm -hmm. and now it remains as uh, a theoretical investigation. Mm -hmm. It's still in that phase. Compared to the other two, we have the application, we have data sets, but for this one, it, it just uh, maybe just my curiosity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. Well, this to me comes across as a hack, and I think I sent you an email that I think there are two uses of languages. So one is knowledge representation language, another one is programming language. And the first part you focused on clarity of semantics, right? So that was knowledge representation part of the story. This is basically more a hack for efficient implementation. And okay, I disagree with that. I think I disagree with that. Yeah, so I, you, you need to explain to me why yeah. why this is the right model. Yeah, because, um, so so my motivation was from capturing, capturing the context through the predicate. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and by that, we, like, with the path, like, if you look, if you look from here to here, you clearly see that the context is captured in this path. In this graph, you don't really see any context in there. And my, my, my goal for that one is to see if the, <coughs> if the entities are involved within the same context, they should be connected. So I am proposing this in order to study how the contexts are connected, how are they, how do we, how they are re like um, related when they are on the same path. So that remains, that question remains open because like now I'm just proposing a means for studying the, the, the context aware path. So because of that I think it is, it is implementation, it's not on the implementation. So when we are traversing this path, we are checking the semantics of each node. And each of them may be connected to different kind of contexts, different kind of properties. Because at this point they are not uh, they are not uh, standard like for time or location yet. But that that is what I, I maybe it is not yet uh, proof with the concrete example, like path, like what kind of thing that we can acquire with the context in the path, but that's the goal. So I didn't I didn't try to make it as like just an implementation. Yeah, I think I have questions, but I will follow it up. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. And I think what probably would need to be demonstrated is, um, so you could derive reachability from mm. the first graph. You could infer yeah. reachability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. without any yeah. problem, without changing yeah. anything. So how is going to be the graph version of this any better than inferring reachability when you need it? And then you also have to modify um, not so algorithm, but graph-based algorithm. So if you want to get certain benefits, you have to give up, you have to put more extra effort or you have to give up something, right? It's, it's, there's nothing like really like free. Even with the SP representation, it comes with a cost. And luckily in this case, it's compatible with the existing standard. But I think to fully exploiting the benefit of the SP, I would, my, in, I think in my future work, I would propose a new, uh, a, a simpler Sparkle syntax in order to, to really take, really query the semantics of the context, not just by, you know, by the syntax at this point. But, but um, that is kind of like future work. Yeah. So let me ask, let me, let me sort of summarize what it is that I'm trying to, what we're yeah, getting yeah. So, um, so you, you, you're proposing, um, uh, uh, an approach for modeling context, which you, uh, the claim is that at least that you have a, 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 a formal semantics which the other ones do not have. And right. the uh, second claim is that there are some people who have used it um, who, who agree with you, right? Um, and yeah. uh, the, the, um, the criteria for assessing what you have done at least what they, when they did it, I, I think if I understand correctly, one is that they, um, the size of the, 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 the model is smaller, at least the, 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 in terms yeah. of the number of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We have, we're not necessarily saying uh, actually the footprint <coughs> on this, just the number of triples, right? Is yeah, that, is yeah, that correct? Yeah, yeah. Words, that's correct. If yeah. I look at, okay. Then, uh, 
so that, that's the first thing. Then, then uh, somehow you, you, I didn't quite follow the reasoning part, but that's because I stepped up for a second. But anyway, somehow you demonstrate that um, this doesn't, you're able to do, uh, um, not at least uh, invalidate uh, uh, basic idea by reasoning. Uh, you, you have your link influence rules to get around that. Um, and then the, the, the third thing is that um, this allows you a graph construction that allows you to sort of explore the graph and find association with the, you know, whatever. That you yeah, yeah. Do. Now, one thing that still, um, maybe because of the bias, the bias that I have, one thing that, uh, I, because you seem to be very uh, uh, interested in adoption, mm. which is a good thing, mm. but adoption is, has two parts, right? So one is that I'm able to model, second is that I'm able to query. I mean, if I can model it, but I yeah. can't query it, what's yeah. the point? Yeah, 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 so, that's right. So, so it seems to me that is... Um, I, I, something that needs at least a discussion, even if you haven't done it, but there is strong intuition about what, <coughs> whether, because if you model and it's easy to model, but then query processing is, is twice what it normally is. Okay, uh, chemophone, chemophone, so, can, so, be, yeah. Uh, chemophone, so um, I think, um, uh, I think you, you missed one point in the evaluation that first thing, <coughs> the query performance, uh, done by us and by um, uh, external groups, they all <coughs> they uh, concluded that the SP give decent performance even without optimization in virtues or style dog. So it doesn't, and and the SP it is purely in the form of idea triples. It doesn't require any modification to the Sparkle in order to query it. And um, and what I was talking about proposing the new syntax is because I believe that the current syntax of the Sparkle does not allow us to exploit the context of the triple in that form. So I would like to simplify that Sparkle syntax in the way that I would eliminate the use of name graph and instead of that just plan triples. Make it like really simple, like the beginning of the sparkle. Okay, so, but 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 uh, but that uh, uh, but that sparkle specification is not in this. Um, it is not in this dissertation. It's like a future work. So it's just no, for I'm discussion. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So let me just let me just let me just think what's going on here. So, okay. So uh, in the model, you have the original statement, and then you have your own introduced SP right? Yeah. So essentially what in the evaluation, what they have done is they've done evaluation with queries on the regular pr properties. Yes. Right? Uh, and so there's really, so essentially the only thing that is that, uh, uh, yeah, there will be nothing to change at that point because they are, they are querying, they are doing the basic, they are doing a Sparkle query processing on the existing triple. Yours just happen to be uh, triples that are in there, which they may have included uh, in the, the model or not, or kept separately or whatever. And so there's really, um, yeah, okay, maybe. So can I So so, okay. um, so, so, so querying, for, querying for the, con so let's not worry about querying for the basic things. The question is, you introduced a way to, uh, to add context. Uh. So now, uh, I cannot, I cannot query for the context, what point, then what point is the add, what point do you have for adding it? So, Chemophore, uh, why do we, why do you say that we cannot query the context? We can query no, the context. You just said that, no, you just said that there's no uh, like way to query. I mean, I didn't, I didn't quite understand. So, how do I, if I want to, okay, you're saying that uh, there's no, uh, you haven't extended the sparkle syntax, but if somebody wants to query it, yeah. So <coughs> if I want to. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Chemophore, Chemophore, can you? Can you wait a second? I'm going back to the query part okay, so that. So, so guys, uh, let me just one one minute break. Um, uh, <coughs> does audience want to anybody opposed to ask any question? Oh yeah.